I want to teach you today about overcoming the challenges of a rogue board member, someone on your board who has been disruptive. I'm going to give you some very practical steps of whether the board member is being disruptive within a board meeting or outside the board meeting. I'll give you practical steps to handle each one of those situations. And what you're looking for here is a pattern of rogue behavior, not someone who's just had an off day and been tired at the board meeting, been a bit grumpy, but someone who has a pattern of going rogue, of being disruptive in the board or outside the board. And I think there's a couple of overriding principles when you come to handle these situations. The number one is always go for a private chat first with the person. Take them aside for a coffee, share with them, make sure that you're not deeply frustrated and emotional in that meeting. Calm down, get your blood pressure down, and share with them your heart for them and your concern for them and also aspects of their behavior that you know are proven facts that you can share with them, not just rumors and hearsay, but something that you've observed yourself or at least two or three people have fed back to you. Hey, I'm seeing this behavior in a board member outside the board meeting. So go for a private chat. Secondly, never forget the power of a coalition. Make sure that you're not doing this just all by yourself. Talk with another board member first. Ask their advice. Maybe the overseer in your denomination, someone that you trust, another pastor. Maybe a key stakeholder in the church. Someone who is supportive of you. Someone who really has your back and will love you and prayerfully work with you in this whole process. Now let's talk about the two areas where a board member can go rogue. The first one is the board member who goes disruptive and goes rogue within a board meeting. They're always negative, always got the brakes on. Every idea, they're negative about it, they put it down, they're opposing ideas. They never seem to be faithful or joyful in those meetings. They bring a dampener on the meeting. That board member's gone rogue on you in that board meeting. What do you do? Well, I think you have to back up first and do some things overall with your board. One of the things I do when I'm coaching boards and consulting with churches is I actually ask them this question. Why do you meet as a board? What's the purpose of your board? And I ask them around the table one by one, what is your purpose? And it's interesting, the different responses. And I encourage them to work in a board meeting on their purpose and to make it a written sentence and put it at the very top of the agenda of each board meeting to remind yourself this is why we meet and to bring board members back to that purpose. And so you can address this in a board meeting and say, hey, the reason we're meeting is not to be down on everything that comes across the table, not to be negative, but to approach things with faith, knowing we're building the church, we're advancing the kingdom, to have that sense of mission within the board concerning the overarching mission of the church. I think another thing to do when you have someone who's a really negative Nancy, if you like, someone who's always down on things, is to actually spend some time talking about having different hats in your board. Edward de Bono came up with this concept of the different hats and that you wear in a meeting. And one of the hats is actually the black hat, the devil's advocate. And sometimes it's actually good when you come to a session of the board meeting, when you're going to talk about a new idea, you say, Hey, uh, Bill, we want you in this meeting to wear the black hat. No one else wears the black hat. There are other hats. I can't remember them all. A white hat, a green hat, a yellow hat. Are basically taking on the role of the black hat, which is devil's advocate. Now, never give this to the disruptive board member. Give it to someone else. And, and when that rogue board member tries to be negative and say, no, 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 you've got the yellow hat of sunshine on. You have to be bright. You have to tell us what will work about this idea. I think it's a very clever way to get people out of their normal routine and actually thinking differently about their role. I think also it's important to be very smart about your board members and to work out who has the power in the board meeting. I think especially when you've got a young pastor coming into a brand a brand new situation and an established board. I always remember John Maxwell's story, the first church 
that he pastored. And before every board meeting, he'd go out to the farm where there was a key board member as a farmer. And he'd work with the farmer for a few hours and he'd tell stories of what he wanted to do in the church and how he wanted to make things happen. And then he'd come to the next board meeting and he would go, hey, I've got this great idea. And that key board member would support John in it, would would actually move the motion. And someone would second and the board would say yes, and off they go. Smart pastors work with their board, not against their board. So think about that. Who are the power brokers around the table? Work with them to see change in your board. Now, thanks so much for watching on YouTube here on the channel. Make sure you check out the link in the description below to all the things that we do at Grow Healthy Church. Leave me a comment. How have you handled road board members? Make sure you smash the like button and also hit that subscribe button. Let's have a look at the second aspect of going rogue where the board member goes rogue outside the board meeting. They're white anting the leadership. They're letting people know, hey, I don't really agree with that decision the board's made. Or maybe they've just gotten really sloppy in their attendance and they've stopped serving the life of the church. How do you handle these situations where a board member is actually disruptive, not in the meeting, they're fine in a meeting, but outside the meeting, they're creating problems? Well, I think it's really important in your board's education and even your onboarding of new members, but also revisiting about why do we exist and how do we operate as a board to remind the board that board members have no power in themselves. The power of a board is in the collective. And to actually remind the board members and say, hey, just remember, you can never say as a board member, because I'm a board member, therefore you have to listen to me. No, you as a board member actually in yourself, best practice in board governance is that you have no power as a board member. You only have power as a collective together. Remind your board of this fairly regularly. And also, if you have a disruptive board member going rogue, remind them of this, that as a board member, they are powerless. As a collective, that's where the power sits. Also, remember that in that private chat, if you have a chat to them and you can't reach any sense of agreement, then I think follow up with another board member and basically call the person to unity. Call them to agreement and say, look, if you can't cope with being on the board and coming into unity and agreement, then I'm afraid um, you either got a choice here, you must stop white anting, you must stop spreading your disagreement, or you need to resign off the board. It must come to that. You cannot allow a board member to continue on the board if their whole process is disruptive and white anting and undermining the leadership. Very important to take that step. And I think finally, if they've stopped serving, if their attendance at church is really irregular and they've stopped serving, then I think in the conversation, it's, it's, it's basically saying to the board member, look, you cannot be a board member in our church and not serve somewhere in the life of the church. To be a greeter on the tech area, on the worship team, the children's ministry, hospitality, whatever it is, helping park cars, whatever it is, you must be serving. I would never allow a board member in our church to be on the board and not serve that to me was just, that's absolutely a line you can't cross. And if a board member stopped serving and wanted to break from serving, I would say, totally fine, but you also must step off the church board while you are not serving. If you want to remain on the church board, great, but you're going to have to continue serving. I hope this really helps you in working out how to handle a board member who's gone rogue. Now, in the description below, you'll find a link to our three-minute quiz about how to build a stronger serving culture in the life of your church. Just three minutes, jump into the quiz. I think you'll find it really helpful.